If you have watched any one of my videos, you will know that my makeup aesthetic may be best described as glowy AF. But even so, I cannot imagine my makeup life without setting powder. I think it's a really powerful tool in terms of obviously practical reasons, it enhances makeup longevity. But even from an aesthetic standpoint, I think that the, the glossy cheekbone almost shines brighter when the eye isn't detracted by the greasy puddle around the nose, if you catch my drift. But look, I am so fussy about the kinds of powders that I use um, and for what purposes I use them. So today I'm gonna show you some of my favorites, the ones that I keep coming back to and I keep repurchasing. Where to start? Rouge Bunny Rouge Diaphanous. This is the first powder that I really fell in love with. I remember having a light bulb moment like, can you believe that not all powders are heavy and cakey and dusty? Like, where have you been all my life? Diaphanous is a very light and airy powder. As you open the compact, you can actually see it escape into the air. Try not to breathe that in. <laughs> um, but it is great for just muting any excessive shine. So it's not gonna get you to a matte complexion. It's more about just kind of taking the edge off that shine. And it is phenomenal in my books because this stuff is invisible. I get up in there with a magnifying mirror in front of these studio lights and I cannot see powder on my skin. Like many of my favorite powders, this one is silica based. Uh, if you didn't already know, silica is that ingredient that's associated with that really ghost cast in, in flash photography. But am I gonna have a little rant? Yes, I am gonna have a little rant. Uh, you know, so much on YouTube we talk about flash-friendly makeup um, and photo-friendly makeup. And I've definitely been part of that movement because people always ask me about it. But really, how often does the average person find themselves in a proper flash setup? Like once in a blue moon, maybe, right? And I'm not talking about iPhone flash. Um, because iPhone will make everything flash back just from proximity. And besides, we shouldn't be using the iPhone flash because it is the devil. Rant over, back to diaphanous. So I would recommend this one for people who hate powder. People who typically hate powder, I, I uh, challenge you to, to this product. Also those with dry, normal, or even uh, more combo skin types who just want to mute a little bit of shine but keep the skin looking really uber natural. I love you. Another powder that I adore for actually very similar reasons is the By Terry Hyaluronic Hydra Powder. Um, and this is very, very similar to the Rouge Bunny Rouge. Um, fine, airy, silica-based, super natural on the skin, undetectable. Um, so again, dry, normal combo skins looking to mute some shine. That one is a little bit more widely available than the Rouge Bunny Rouge. The Urban Decay Velvetizer. So you guys might remember when this product came out, it wasn't too long ago, and it was marketed as like a mix-in kind of product. You would mix in some of this powder with your existing liquid foundations and it would change the formula and make it more matte. So it's kind of like a DIY your own foundation thing. I actually did experiment uh, with that. Didn't really get it. I prefer it as a standalone powder. This one is also silica based, but it is so different from the previous two that I mentioned because this one is so incredibly matte. I don't, I don't know what kind of technology, some sort of super absorbent polymer technology that they've used in this product, but it's like a, it's like a wannabe ShamWow. <laughs> ShamWow holds 12 times its weight in liquid. Look at this, it just does the work. You wash it in the washing machine, made in Germany. You know the Germans always make good stuff. You really don't need much product at all. So what I do is I get a little bit of that powder onto my powder brush and I pretty much, I just dust it all off. And whatever is left on that brush is plenty to, to mattify the skin. I find that if you a little bit heavy handed with this one, it does a very unusual textual thing where it beads up on the skin, almost like little droplets of water. I'm telling you, this stuff is wild. Um, so there is a little bit of a learning curve, but I use this product when I'm looking for more of a matte complexion, um, but I don't want it to be kind of cakey or dry or heavy. The only thing is that I don't love this powder for under the eyes. Uh, it just makes the under eye area look a little bit dull. Uh, it's just not as brightening as I would like. Um, but in terms of skin type, obviously I think your oilier skin types are going to enjoy that oil absorbency, the matte effect, but pretty much anyone who wants more of a, a matte complexion. The Laura Mercier Translucent. Um, this is an oldie but a goodie. You've seen it a lot on YouTube. It really stands the test of time. 
This is uh, great for glam looks. It's particularly good for baking, um, if, if that's your jam. And this is the powder that I, I trust with flash photography. For that once in a blue moon occasion when I or a bride-to-be is, is likely to be subject to flash. Although most brides nowadays actually they take um, they do that photography in natural light, but that's besides the point. If I was doing anything flash, any shoot, this, I trust this powder 100%. Laura Mercier Translucent is talc based, and talc is a heavier mineral. Where silica will float in the air when you open the compact, talc doesn't do that. Um, so this is less of an everyday kind of powder in my books because it is heavier and you can see powder on the skin. But that might totally work to your advantage if you have an oilier skin type, because this one is definitely um, more oil absorbent than any of the other options that I'm mentioning today. <laughs> the Cover FX Perfect Setting Powder. Now this is how you know that I adore a powder, because it has lash glue all over the packaging. This is my go-to for anything glam. So whether it's low-key baking, I'm doing a full face, I'm going out at night, I'm going to a makeup event, what, what have you, th this, is, this is where I'm at. And I tend to think of it as the Laura Mercier translucent, but the light version. So it feels very similar as you apply it on the skin. Um, and it operates in a similar way, but it's just not quite as heavy and not quite as dry. So perhaps a little bit better geared towards the drier skin types. I especially love it under the eyes. Uh, because the powder has a very slight yellow hue um, which really brightens any shadowy areas and balances any kind of purple tones or grey tones you can get there. Unlike the Laura Mercier, this one is talc free uh, if talc is something that you avoid. Uh, but yeah, really great middle of the road powder um, that I think most skin types will enjoy, but especially um, the drier skin types that have trouble with, with your uh, powders looking powdery. Give this one a go. The Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. So if I was picking a compact uh, powder, this would be it. Um, really great handbag friendly, travel friendly. It's really great on so many different skin types um, and also so many different kinds of skin textures. So whether you have uh, flaky patches or elevated blemishes uh, or perhaps fine lines, it's just really kind to texture. It's really brilliant in particular for touch-ups. Like you can apply this quite a few times throughout the day and it doesn't want to go cakey. It resists the cakey. Good job. In terms of skin type, I would say most skin types are going to enjoy this for, for your touch-ups and just muting a little bit of shine. It's not going to keep exceptionally oily skin at bay though. Just keep that in mind. The Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder for Under Eyes. Now this is a product that I have loved since like before YouTube, so in a previous lifetime. Um, and I never hear anybody talk about it online, which is strange because it's the best. Um, so again, another silica airy powder, um, but this one is designed for the under eyes and it is so illuminating. It like brightens the under eye area and makes you look more refreshed and awake. It's kind of like magic. I got my auntie onto this stuff too. Worth noting for those of us who are a little bit neurotic, it's okay, I feel you, I'm a bit neurotic myself. Uh, if you go into direct sunlight with a, a magnifying mirror, you might detect like a small amount of reflect. It's not shimmer, it's just kind of illuminating particles. Um, again, not noticeable in any regular setting, but if you're really looking for it, you might find it. I imagine it is part of the function of, of the brightening, brightening, you know, yeah, yeah. The Tom Ford Illuminating Powder. Um, so this one actually does have a touch of coverage, just a little, and hopefully you can see that the, uh, the powder is a pale yellow, and it operates via the same principle as banana powders. So that yellow tone really lifts any shadows um, or hollows on the face. I have used it kind of dusted down the T-zone, the but I think the real magic in this product um, can be seen when used uh, under the eyes. So sometimes when I finish my makeup, I look at myself in the mirror and I say to myself, mate, you still look rough, what's going on? So in instances like that, I'll take um, this powder and just dust a little bit in any areas under the eye where I'm seeing shadows. I also get shadows a bit between the brows, maybe a bit in the temples, around the mouth, and it just, lifts the complexion, it just brightens my face. Kind of like a real life filter, if you will. You know another powder that I use all the time and it didn't occur to me until this very moment, 
This compact, you see this compact in all of my tutorials. I just like the mirror, you know, it's a good crisp mirror, but this yellow powder, it's a very creamy formula, really fine pigment, not powdery on the face. And I often use this just to sort of finish up my makeup, blend out the edges of my eyeshadow, lift any shadows under the eyes. It's a, a multi, multitasking product. Love that palette. <laughs> There are a ton of other powders that I enjoy and could have mentioned today, but when I think to myself, powders that I cannot live without, these are, these are the products that immediately come to mind. So I would love to know, what are your standout setting powders um, and why do you love them? Let us know in the comment section down below and we can all have a bit of a read. Come follow me on Instagram at Karima McKimmy. That's where I post about my plants if you like plants. I'm also like dabbling in nail art. So right now I have a multicolor confetti on my nails. What more? What more could you ask for? I also post giveaways there. Uh, so yeah, it's all around a really fun time. I hope you're having a wonderful day, whatever it is that you're up to, and I shall speak to you all very soon.